She's got long legs and short shorts, but she ain't got no teeth. She wears a red bandana on her head, and she smiles so, so sweet. She'll steal your heart, a very sap should rip apart your soul. She'll torture your mind and waste your time and drag you down the road. Cause she's a Jezebel, St. Andrew Jezebel. Cause she's a Jezebel, St. Andrew Jezebel. Hey y'all, you're listening to the St. Andrew's Jezebel podcast. My name is Ashley, and our salty local guest for this week is musician and fitness enthusiast Sam Weigel. Sam's here to tell his story about how he transitioned from the life of a working musician to finding a revived passion for fitness as well as competing in strongman competitions. For this week's old news segment, we'll hear a word from the Ware Mercantile this week in history in 1918. If you've been enjoying the podcast and would like to show your support, you can make a one-time donation on our coffee page. I'll include it in the show notes. For a more enhanced experience, follow the podcast on Facebook and Instagram. The St. Andrew's Jezebel podcast is now available to stream directly from Facebook. So if you're out there and you'd like to show some support, please share this episode with all your salty friends. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoy this interview with Sam Weigel. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite beer, and enjoy the show. Today on the St. Andrew's Jezebel podcast, we are meeting with my friend, Sam Weigel. So Sam, we missed you. You recently moved back to Bay County after a short stint in Memphis. What have you been up to since you moved back? Well, just a little bit of, you know, the typical things, finding new jobs and uh, getting kind of a a new routine started. And and by the way, glad to be here and a real honor to be on the podcast. Trying to establish like a, a routine with job, working out, taking care of kids, and uh, and trying to fit in a little music at the same time, and and also take advantage of all the events going on because there's been a lot of really cool stuff downtown, St. Andrews, you know, out on on 30A, and we've been trying to, you know, really just enjoy being back and and everything that the area has to offer. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you back because I love hearing you and Melissa play, and it's I'm glad y'all are back with us. So we met quite some time ago through music and through the music community, but now you're also focused on fitness and lifting weights, which led to you working out and then later strongman competitions. Can you tell us about that? So actually, working out has been part of my life longer than music. And first of all, I have to establish that I was not by any means athletic growing up, was not involved in any team sports, really. It wasn't my thing. But I did start working out around middle school, thanks to the influence of a friend's older brother who was training me a little bit. And uh, it was always something that was kind of part of my routine growing up. And uh, I tried a lot of different things. I did martial arts. I tried basketball in high school, gymnastics, even tried fencing in college. But nothing that really took, again, don't really consider myself an athlete. But really, the biggest game changer came in my 30s, around 2012, I started doing CrossFit, and uh, that really kind of sparked sort of a competitive urge that I had never experienced before, and really kind of wanting to see what I could push my body to do. And I did that off and on for a few years, and then, as tends to be the case, life happened, and I went through uh, divorce, remarriage, hurricane, you know, all of your standard things. And really kind of got to a point where I was not happy with myself. I was at my heaviest weight ever on my 39th birthday. And I just decided that I did not want to go into middle age with a quote unquote dad bod. This led me to look into online coaching and and also to pursue finding a diet plan that would help me get to a healthy weight and stay there, which is something I had never really looked into before. I had never really been dedicated with my diet. So what I ended up doing was getting into powerlifting since I had some nagging injuries from CrossFit, just some overuse problems that the long and short of it is that I was okay with lifting the heavy weights. I wasn't so much okay with all the running and box jumps and all the gymnastics and things that really kind of cater to smaller framed people. So I liked lifting weights and I just decided, okay, I'm going to do a powerlifting competition and I'm going to actually cut weight and be in a smaller weight class. So I ended up losing 40 pounds over the course of seven months and did that competition 
and the whole training and diet was a great experience and I got to my goal weight, but the competition itself was just kind of a bore. It was not really what I was looking for. It was kind of a long day of sitting around and waiting for your turn. And so I really kind of wasn't finding that thing to scratch the itch of, of competitiveness that I had newly discovered. So in February of 2020, I was going to the Wellness and Fitness Center here in Panama City, and uh, they got some new equipment, some strongman-oriented equipment, and uh, I tried it out, and I loved it. And that got me thinking, well, maybe this is something I could do that could kind of help me continue on this fitness journey, and that would give me the, the motivation that I need, and then the competition aspect itself would also be interesting and beneficial. And so I looked into it, and it turned out that there was a competition close by in death that that summer and you didn't have to be a giant and be you know six eight and four hundred pounds there were weight classes and all of this stuff that i had no idea about the sport of strongman i said well maybe this is something i can actually do and so i trained for it and i ended up competing at the uh, gulf coast strongest in destin i didn't get on the podium <laughs> But it was a great experience. It, the event had a lot of energy. Everyone was really cool. And just overall, it was an amazing experience, like nothing I had ever really been to before. And so from that point on, I was really kind of hooked on the sport of strongman and started kind of trying to understand it more. It is kind of a niche sport, and a lot of people only think of it as what they've seen on uh, World's Strongest Man that right. comes on around you know, the holiday time every year and uh, it's these giant guys lifting these giant weights or lifting cars and uh, but there is more to it than that and it really is something that can be pursued by anybody so that was kind of how I got started with the uh, the sport of strongman and that just led me to learning more about fitness in general and about you know how to maintain a diet that would let me achieve my goals and that's really kind of one thing led to another that's where I'm at awesome so what's the biggest takeaway you've gotten on your education as far as nutrition goes it really all comes down to the principle of energy balance which is to say if you eat fewer calories than you burn you're in what's called a calorie deficit, which ultimately means you're going to lose weight. Mm -hmm. If you eat more calories than you burn, you're going to gain weight. That's a calorie surplus. That's really the, the fulcrum principle of dieting in general. There are all these popular diets. There's, you know, there's keto, paleo, low fat, low carb, what have you. The, but the ultimate goal is just to cut out whatever foods are keeping you from eating within that range that keeps you in energy balance and allows you to either stay the same weight or lose weight. And the easiest way that I've found to do that is just to track your food with an app. And uh, through that process, actually several times over the last few years, I've managed to get from whatever weight I was at down to, to my goal weight because in, in whatever, you know, if you're in a competitive strength sport, a lot of time you're going to be in a weight class and you have to be able to maintain that body weight regardless of any other factors. And so that's the easiest way to do it, really. Awesome. And so what would you say to someone who's given up living a healthy lifestyle and what is the first change that they can make in the steps in the right direction of taking charge of their health? So here's the issue I have with the way the the fitness and nutrition industry tends to present the issue of trying to lose weight or find a healthy lifestyle. It's often presented as an attempt to make the smallest change possible and basically still maintain the lifestyle that you're in previously. The problem I have with that is I'm going to talk about a couple scientific principles here. One is homeostasis, which essentially means that your body tries to maintain the status quo no matter what. So if you present a stimulus that doesn't really cause your body to deviate from what it's accustomed to, it's not really going to make a permanent change. So if you try to make a big change to your health or your weight by making one small change, like say cutting out soda, 
that may work for a little while. That's not going to elicit the kind of long-term change that most people are looking for. And, and the other principle is escape velocity. So when you have a rocket that's trying to leave Earth, it has to reach a certain velocity where it will continue to travel past the atmosphere and escape from Earth's gravity without continued application of force. If it doesn't reach that velocity, it falls back to Earth. And I see the trajectory of a person trying to make a lifestyle change in the same way. If you don't make a big enough change, you're going to go back to whatever you're accustomed to. So I may be in the minority in my thought process on this, but I actually think the best way to approach making a big change to your lifestyle and to your pursuit of health as making the biggest change that you can make without completely upending your life. So if you could pick an activity or a sport that interests you and that you could see yourself being passionate about, and it could be any, it could be running marathons. It could be aerial dancing. It could be rock climbing. It doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, doing a bodybuilding competition and, and it just needs to be something that gets you out of your comfort zone, literally and figuratively. If you can find something that inspires you in that regard and then pursue that, find a way to fit it into your life, make whatever accommodations you have to make that happen for you. I personally feel like that's the most effective way to make a really big change in your health. And a lot of people are concerned about family, friends, significant others, whoever else might be in their life, that this might be inconveniencing them or you know making life more difficult for them. But I say if they're in your corner, they're going to support you. They're going to be happy for you that you're trying to make this change, and they're going to do whatever is necessary to accommodate it. Within reason, of course. So that's how I feel about it is that instead of trying to make the smallest change possible, you should really try to make the biggest change possible because that's what's going to set your life on a different course. That's what's going to give you the escape velocity that you need to get out of whatever patterns are keeping you in an unhealthy lifestyle and create a new one for you. And in the process, it may give you a completely different passion and or, or it may give you a completely different avenue for your passion and your direction in life. Personally, I feel like I had kind of an unhealthy relationship with music because I treated it like a competitive sport. I'm not what you would call your typical creative person. I can actually count on both hands, the number of decent songs that I've written in my life. That's not really where it was at for me. I just wanted to be the best guitar player and the best performer and just the best. That was what mattered to me. And I viewed it in a competitive sense. When I was learning to play guitar, I would see someone performing and say, I'm going to be better than that guy. And then I would practice until I was. That was what motivated me to learn and to practice. And I got myself to a point where I could no longer put in the time that I needed to continue getting better because I was supporting myself with this skill that I had acquired and it wasn't fun anymore. So I had trapped myself by being at a point where I had to do the same thing and maintain the status quo and that was all I could do. And it was at that point that I shifted gears and, and, and realized that, you know, there are those of us who can take something that we're really passionate about and can devote a lot of creative energy towards and still also make it our livelihood, yourself being a good example. And then there are those of us who couldn't, can't, or should not do that because it really just ruins it. It becomes a job. And that's where I was at. I shifted gears in the sense of what I was passionate about from trying to be the best musician I could to just trying to be as healthy and strong as I could be. And that coincided with me 
changing careers and changing how I was supporting myself. And I ended up being a lot happier and healthier as a result of it. But at the same time, I do want to find a way to be in kind of a, a healthier relationship with music, so to speak, because where I'm at now, I feel a little bit like music is that X that just won't go away, that they keep, <laughs> they keep coming in and out of your life. Right. And, uh, you know, every time they show up, they just wreck everything. And I don't want it to be like that. I want to find a way to just have fun with it and just do it for me. So hopefully while I'm on this journey of exploring fitness and health and being passionate about that, while I'm making my livelihood with a completely different career, I'll find a way to also fit music back into the mix and do it in a way that's healthy and that's also like creative and fun and, and do it in, in a way that benefits me versus just trying to compete with the next guy. Well, it sounds like you've got a good system down. It sounds like your more recent found passion should help take care of what you state is your unhealthy relationship with music that you had. Now, you're still playing music around here and there. Are you playing anywhere soon? I am playing at History Class on March 5th, and that'll be my first time there. Looking forward to that. Look out for a special guest appearance by my wife, Melissa Bowman. Yay! And uh, I'm at Brick Wall Bar and Grill in Port St. Joe every other Tuesday, so just watch my feed for the dates. I'll be at Little Village the first Saturday in April. Well, that sounds awesome. I hope to catch you around. What do you love about playing music in St. Andrews? So St. Andrews and downtown are the two areas that really just feel like home to me. And I really love what's happened in the last few years and how it's become uh, a place where you can go any night of the week and hear music. And it kind of feels like it's always the weekend, which is awesome. You know, at, at any given point, you can just turn up after work one day and, and go sit somewhere and have a beer and hear live music. And that's amazing because most towns this size don't have that. I'm really proud of the community and what it has become and uh, kind of sorry that I ever left and just look forward to, to seeing where it goes in the next few years and hoping to be a part of it. Heck yeah. So you've got ties to Tennessee and probably other places too. What would you tell your friends and other places about St. Andrews if they were going to come to visit? Oh, so much. Definitely go to Little Village slash Fins and get a crunch wrap and listen to some music and sit on the palapa. Not on the palapa, but in the palapa. <laughs> you know, I love Los Antijitos. I actually played music there uh, a long time ago at their previous location. I would actually do some Spanish guitar and it's still a great place to go for food and margaritas and music. I think everything that Phil Mercer and Bobby Beard have done lately, all of their establishments are an amazing addition to uh, our community. I love the Salty Hobo and I love the Slice House and just the food and drink and camaraderie in those places is really cool. And they're, you know, also great places to, to catch music and just there's so much happening in a, in a small area, you can't really pick one spot and say, yeah, this is the place to go. You really just need to take a weekend or, or a few days and try to get a sampling of all of it and, and get the St. Andrews experience, I guess. That's a wonderful way to put it. The St. Andrews experience. I love it. What are your hopes for St. Andrews? I hope it just keeps doing what it's doing and I hope to be able to play out a little more and, you know, see some friendly faces and make a little extra money on the side. You know, that never hurts. I'm not doing this full time, but it's great to, to get out there and, and, you know, play a gig every now and then in a place that feels like home. And San Andrews is definitely good for that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the positivity and encouragement that you've given me and the podcast. I really appreciate it. And I, I hope to catch you playing live soon. Oh, likewise. Absolutely. Anything new or exciting coming up? And how can folks find you online and beyond? So just going back to the whole, you know, fitness and strongman thing. On March 27th, there is an hosted by Strength for Strength. And that's strength and then the number four strength. Dot com you can find them there it's a it's an event to bring awareness to mental illness and in particular they're loca they're located in Australia which has a particularly high incidence of they have a particularly high incidence 
of suicide there and suicide related ideation. And so this is just an event to kind of bring awareness to that. And uh, so what we're doing is we're actually walking a 5K while carrying a strongman yoke that weighs 350 pounds. Wow. So it's just this big con- contraption that you carry across your shoulders, weighs 350 pounds. You get five hours to carry this thing as far as possible, ideally a 5K or beyond, but it's really just whatever you can manage in the time frame. It's a team event. Any strong people that are interested can actually go to the link on my Facebook page and join my team, or they can make a donation. Really, anything would be great because this is a really cool event that happens once a year. And and once again, that's on March 27th. Fantastic. Well, again, thank you so much for being here, folks. If you're interested in fitness, if you have any questions, could folks reach out to you? Oh, absolutely. How do they get a hold of you? Probably Facebook Messenger is the best way. All right. And spell your last name for us. W-E-I-G-L-E. Fantastic. Well, Sam, thank you so much for being here on the St. Andrews Jezebel podcast. Until next time, keep St. Andrews salty. One of the best things about St. Andrews is that you can see live music every day. That's right. There is live music being played somewhere in St. Andrews seven nights a week. Fortunately, my friend Ken Schaefer creates and publishes a weekly schedule for St. Andrews as well as most of Bay County. Ken's spreadsheet schedule is updated often when there's any changes. Ken also shares individual music events and is walking the walk and talking the talk when it comes to supporting live music. Not only does Ken supply the music schedules, but he attends several music performances a week and takes fantastic photos of the musicians. As a working musician myself, I feel blessed to have Ken and his wife Donna as treasured members of our local musical family. Make sure you like and follow Ken's page, Salty Sounds in St. Andrews, and Oh Boy Music on Facebook so that you'll always know where all the live music will happen. Thank you so much, Ken, for everything you do. I hope everyone had a great time last week. I heard it was a big time. So here's a few community events for the week of February 24th through March the 2nd. Let's start with Thursday. So last week, I went to Collaboration Night at the Library on Beck. It was hosted by Stephen Meyer, and I must say, he is an awesome host. He makes everyone feel so welcome, and I heard some really great music that night. They'll be doing it again this week on Thursday night, starting at about 7 p.m., Moving on to Friday night, Chris Wade is playing at Little Village from 6 to 9, so that's a good time for you to get out and get your taco fix, and they've also got a nice little beer selection at Little Village as well. Saturday, you've got the market at St. Andrews. I believe they begin about 8 or 9 in the morning, and then at 10 a.m., there's live music at the market brought to you by Floriopolis, and it is also the 6th annual Salty Dog Day event. They'll be celebrating all things dog in Salty St. Andrews, This Saturday, again, February 26th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. This dog-friendly event will be an extension of the market at St. Andrews with proceeds benefiting Operation Spay Bay. Sox, the current Salty Dog Mayor of St. Andrews, will greet visitors to the market and will announce the new winner of the Salty Dog Mayor's Contest. The market will include unique Salty Dog t-shirts, dog merchandise, vendors, veterinarians, treat stations, dog food play area, food, music, shopping and entertainment, as well as blessing of the dogs, adoptions, and a silent auction. Sunday Fun Day is always the best in St. Andrews. I absolutely love it. One of the best places to get brunch is at Alice's on Bayview. I usually get the Bloody Mary and the Shrimp and Grits. I love it because they usually have live jazz music. It's a wonderful atmosphere. Another option for you on Sunday would be the tap room. They always have music around noon, and the music is always fantastic there. They've got all that great craft beer. It's a wonderful courtyard to just sit back with your friends and enjoy yourself. And there's usually a food truck there as well, so you can't go wrong with going to the tap room on Sunday, y'all. Let's go on to Monday. So Monday is Monday Night Little Fest, and that's also at Tap Room, and that starts at 6 p.m. I really love Monday Night Little Fest because you really get to see the local music community in a more casual setting. It's not quite an open mic. It's more like a showcase, and it's a wonderful time for you to see some great local talent. 
Let's go on to Tuesday. There's trivia also at Tap Room, and I think they start around 6 or 7. You might want to check their Facebook page to be sure. Wednesday, there's public hours at Floriopolis from noon to 5. Also on Wednesdays, there's a comedy open mic at the Library on Beck, and the sign-up is at 7.30, and this is brought to you by Panama City Comedy. That's all the community events I've got for this week. Tune in next week for more. And now a word from our pretend sponsor from the St. Andrews Bay News, published February 26th, 1918. Summer is jumping over spring, but we are prepared for it. Sun hats for men, women, and children, white canvas boots, pumps, and oxfords for ladies and misses, a dollar twenty-five to three fifty. Tennis shoes for men and boys, a dollar to a dollar fifty. Dandy line of shirts, seventy-five cents to two dollars. Work clothes, wash pants for men and boys, and don't forget that we have the prettiest line of gingham in Bay County. We're Mercantile Company, the Pioneer Store. Chaz Cotton Manager, Headquarters for Groceries, Hardware, Feeds, etc. St. Andrews, Florida. Thank you all so much for tuning into this week's episode of the St. Andrews Jezebel Podcast. Make sure you tell all your salty friends to follow us on Facebook so they'll receive a notification every Thursday when episodes go live. we got some great guests coming up, y'all. On March 3rd, we've got Henry Brigmond of Beach 95.1 in Keller Williams. He'll be here to talk about his new podcast, Sweet Home PCB, And then the week following, we've got Ben Ligon, who owns and runs Native Spirit Museum and Gallery right here in St. Andrews. March is Archaeology Month, so I'm especially excited to welcome Ben back. Our season two finale drops March 17th, and who better to close out the season than local singer-songwriter Tyler Reese? The podcast will be back by April the 7th. If you liked our theme song, it was written by me and recorded by Dave Schwartz on the campus of Gulf Coast State College. The rest was written by me and recorded in my music room with the interviews recorded at Floriopolis. See y'all next Thursday. Till next time, keep St. Andrew salty. Red lipstick, so thick, and a push-up bra. Tramp stamp, stretch marks, and a lacy thong, cause she's a Jezebel. St. Andrew Jezebel, cause she's a Jezebel. St. Andrew.